Hello and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage. Today I am with my new generation Ford Ranger Raptor and in this video today I'm going to be telling you the five things that I don't like about this truck after owning it for the past four weeks. This is my Ford Ranger Raptor, the new generation vehicle and I've had this truck now for about four weeks and in it I've done about a thousand miles. So pretty reasonable mileage and for me it's given me a chance to reflect on it take a look at the truck and kind of think what are the five things that i love about it but more importantly for this video what are the five things that i really don't like about it things that i might change on it if i can some of the things i can't change they've been done by ford but still let's go through it today and talk about the five things that i'm not that pleased with and things that i, that I would change if i could on this ford ranger raptor so the ford ranger raptor comes in two different engine types you've got the two liter diesel by turbo which was the same one on the older generation Ford Rangers and the Ford Ranger Raptor and then this Raptor also came with the option to have the three litre petrol twin turbo which is what I've gone for in my Ford Ranger Raptor here and you can tell that by the fact that you have these two decent side exhaust in the back here so this is the petrol variant and the raptor overall definitely isn't a vehicle for everybody if you are using these trucks as a pickup as a commercial vehicle for towing for moving heavy loads in you'll probably not go for the raptor because the raptor has a reduced tow capacity it has a reduced load bed capacity this tows two and a half tons instead of three and a half like the wild tracks and the load bed holds 650 kilograms rather than a ton which you get in the wild tracks and that is because if i show you under the front here it has different suspension all round so if i go under the front here you'll probably see there you have it this vehicle is running on fox shocks all round which make for an incredible drive and actually the ride quality in this is really similar to a luxury suv to be honest it feels the same it's very smooth it's very quiet but as a result, you get a reduced load capacity on the back and a reduced tow capacity. For me, that's not a problem. I'm using this as a leisure vehicle. The most I really want to tow in something like this is about two tons. So it works well for me. So let's get to the five things that I would change on my Ford Range Rapture if I could. And some of them I can. Some of them have been designed by Ford and therefore I can't. But I will let you know what they are. Some of the things that frustrate me about the design of the vehicle in general. Overall, it's been a very positive experience and it's been one of my favourite vehicles that I've owned overall. Even though it's just been four weeks and maybe i'll change my mind but at the moment i've absolutely loved it so far so the first thing is cosmetic and aesthetic and when you look at the vehicle from the outside you can see it's well color coded you've got kind of the grill the lights it all looks great the black vents through here everything is really nicely done you don't have much chrome or silver on the back here it's all very well done however i want to thank the sponsor of today's video car vertical car vertical is a vehicle checking website where if you're buying a used car you can get a full detailed report on exactly what you'd want to know about your next vehicle. Check whether it's been stolen, written off, if it's had any damage to it at all, and just get a really good thorough check on the history, which gives you peace of mind if you're thinking of buying your next used car. If you're new to Car Vertical and you're doing your first check, use my code DOCTOR, which gives you 20% off your first vehicle check with them. Now, let's get back to the video. What they did, which I still don't understand, and I see people on the on the uh, American forums talk about this, is you've got this really bright bar of silver across the front. And I think that was on the old ranges as well. Now, when you look down here, as you go down, you do have a skid plate there. However, this is all plastic. And I just think from a design point of view, I would think with everything else being black like this, this would have been two. And so for me, that's first thing to do. Now it could spray this. I'm worried if I spray it, it is going to get chipped. And to be honest, whatever I do to it, it might get chipped. If you guys have got any better ideas than what I'm thinking, which is a wrap, let me know. But I'm going to wrap this myself um, just to kind of black out the front a bit more. And I think it will just look better with the whole style of the vehicle overall. So that's number one. Aesthetically at the front, not that impressed with that massive silver bar that I've got there. So I'm going to be doing that shortly and uh, getting that sorted. Probably document that here on YouTube as well. If you guys want to watch that, see how I do it at least or give it a go. Maybe if you've got a Ford Ranger Raptor, you might want to see that. We'll stick with the outside for now. My number two thing is something that is on all the new Rangers. So the Wild Tracks have it, the other variants have it as well. But with the Raptor, you lose this rear step that's usually here. 
So this panel in the Wild Tracks and any of the variants of the new Ford Ranger have a little step there. And I think that's just such a nice thing to be able to put your foot in and get into the back and have a look in the back. At the moment, if you're on the side of the truck, you step it on the rear wheel to have a look in the back. So that step's missing. And the reason that step's missing is because of the exhaust pipes that run through and round there. So you can't actually get a step in apparently. So that's one thing I think, I just wish they would have worked a solution out for the Ford Ranger Raptor, because I think that'd be quite nice to add in. But anyway, that's the second one on my list of things that I think I would change if I could. So the other three things are actually stuff that I can see from the inside. So let me show you what they are. So inside, generally, great cabin, great cockpit. Absolutely love it inside my Ford Ranger. However, the first one you'll probably see on here, as soon as I start the car, you'll see, which is that. Now, I wasn't expecting great MPG from this, and as I've said in previous videos, I don't do a whole lot of mileage, so the MPG isn't critical to me. However, that is quite bad for just average driving, nothing too exciting. So yeah, the MPG in these vehicles are not great. If you're worried about fuel and using fuel and spending on fuel, this probably isn't the truck for you. So number four is to do with the steering wheel setup and generally the functions and controls. Now you've got this great infotainment screen in the middle, which is very good, works brilliantly with wireless Apple CarPlay and stuff. And you've actually got some controls down here, which I'm so glad they kept. So when you do this, you see the heating control here, your fan controls are on there, which I really, really like. However, if you wanna put your heated steering wheel on, for example, there's no button on the steering wheel. And in most cars, the steering wheel heat button is on here. You do have a whole load of buttons on your steering wheel. So if you look at this side, you've got like your cruise control, you've got your, I don't know what that's called, dynamic cruise control, where you can keep a certain distance from the vehicle in front, your lane keeping, the volume of your music, and then you can set your cruise on there or speak to the car on that side. So that little cluster is that. On this side, you've got your main menu settings. You've got your Raptor feature. So that sets your car up how you want it. If you press the Raptor setting, for example, on there, you'll see the yellow R in the back of the truck just there. But you've got that on there, change music. You've got suspension here. So you can change your suspension, sport, off-road, normal. You've also got your steering as well. And again, sport normal comfort and you've got the exhaust setting here as well which you can go from normal sport baja or quiet now with these settings generally um that's great that you've got so many buttons on here that do all these different things but there's certain things missing like heated steering wheel would be a nice one to have on your steering wheel that you can just click on and off so it's a little thing but if i want to put my heated seat on or my heated steering wheel heated seat would be nice if it was an actual button you could press when you're driving it's quite hard to to navigate down there and feel that you have to go on here and then you have to turn your heated seat on like this, sliding up or sliding down. And if you want your steering wheel on, it's up there and you've got to press that. So it's just very fiddly, because if you imagine if you're driving, for example, and you're trying to say, right, put your heated steering wheel on, you've got to try and aim to find that as you're driving along with a few bumps and everything to find exactly where that is to be able to put it on. So that's just quite frustrating and it'd be so much nicer if that was just on buttons. I'm a big fan of just having buttons for stuff like that. I think great on the infotainment and all the car settings for it to be like this, but I just think on that is the only thing I'd say. It'd be nice if it was an actual button there. The final thing I'm gonna to demonstrate to you, I'm just gonna reverse onto this hill here and show you. So if I stop here and let's say, okay, I'm gonna stop, put it in park. And if I turn the car off, and get out of it, you see the vehicle rolls and that's because the parking brake doesn't come on automatically. You actually have to put the parking brake on or there's a delay on it coming on. So put it on here, listen. So park brake on, park brake off. So you've got to actually put the parking brake on and off. And in most cars, when you stop, and put it in park, the parking brake comes on, this rolls a little bit, which can be a bit dodgy if you're on a hill, partner in a car, for example, that, it would be better if that just came on instead of you having to manually put it on every time because I have forgot it a couple of times and it's rolled even just, um, you know, like a few centimetres, but that's more than what I was expecting it probably to do. I hope that's been an interesting video. Always keen to hear what your thoughts are about the Ford Ranger Raptor or any of the video content I make. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys very, very soon.